our weeks are really hectic. Kids these days not only have activities after school, but also extra classes or sports squeezed into lunch times and even before school in the mornings too. On Ann Mum Pedia Pro 3 Coffee Group, we are talking about whether it's healthy to be as busy as we are with Rachel King and Tui Fleming. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Lovely to have you back in the studio. Uh, let's start with you, Rachel. Why do people feel the need to over schedule? Well, I think in our consumer culture where media, advertising, marketers are telling us that more is more, that more is better, we've kind of inadvertently applied that to our kids and got this idea that we need to add and add and that we're always looking for that thing that's gonna gonna make life better so there's that side I think there's also the comparison side where back in the day keeping up with the Joneses meant keeping up with your neighbors yeah whereas with social media mm. Instagram and the like keeping up with the Joneses now means keeping up with everybody mm. in the world so we've got this crazy amount of people we're comparing to and thinking that we need to do all the things. Yeah, keeping up with their world and their fake Instagram lives too, because let's be honest. Exactly. You don't put all the muck onto Instagram, you <laughs> only put the quality stuff. Uh, Tui, what, what does all the stress do to parents, do you think? So when we're busy and we're rushing around, our bodies are fueled by adrenaline, and so we instantly flick over into our sympathetic parasympathetic nervous system, which we know is our um, fight or flight. And so the blood is flowing to the extremities, which means it's flowing away from all of your core and really vital systems like your respiration, your digestion. So when we're in that mode, we're not operating at our optimal. Um, and when we're rushing and we're busy, over-scheduling exacerbates all of that. It makes all of that happen so we're not operating in the opposing nervous system, which is our parasympathetic nervous system, known as our rest and digest. So, I mean, in a nutshell, it's not healthy for our bodies to be rushing around like we do. It certainly is not. You're right there. Uh, Rachel, what about the negative impacts of overscheduling? Well, I think the obvious one is stress. We've got a generation of kids that are highly stressed and don't have time to decompress. Mm. We've also got a case where if... Our kids are in organised sports with rules, everything's got rules and kind of structure around it. Kids don't have a chance to be creative and they can't learn to think for themselves. They're always being told what to do, so they're losing that side. And then additionally, I think um, remembering that sports and extracurricular are great, particularly for teenagers when they've got hormones raging and they need that sort of outlet. But oftentimes, by the time kids get that old, they're really sick of being pressured into a certain sport and they want mm. to quit. Yeah. So we're kind of missing that window oftentimes by over-scheduling them particularly too early. Just having too much stuff going on. Mm. Uh, Tui, I guess there's also the obvious impact on parents, particularly if you've got more than one child, if you're doing the constant taxiing them around, which mm. I do a lot of, by the way, and watching from the sidelines, then, then you're not as productive or you're not mm. feeling as productive. Mm. Mm. Well, not for lack of uh, or want of trying, I think. I, I think, you know, our generation, if you remember, we grew up in a time where um, it was really desirable to be an all-rounder and you know to be able to multitask and so as parents we do try to get things done from the sidelines I know guilty as charged you know I'll get the phone out and try to be going through emails feeling productive but the research now is that um, single tasking is far more effective than multitasking so although we may be feeling a little more productive getting these things done mm. it's actually not as effective as we think and the downside of that of course productivity versus presence so instead of trying trying to get all these things done, when in actual fact we're not being very productive or effective, why not actually stop, check in with ourselves and celebrate the fact that we're being present, truly present for our kids. Um, it brings to mind a quote which is um, something like, children are not um, a distraction from more important work, they are the most important work. And that's absolutely true and I do find that um, when you're on the sidelines you could be doing an email and responding, your child doesn't know that, they think you're on Facebook and mm. that's the one time they get a goal too. Yeah. It's always yeah. the one time guaranteed. <laughs> um, Rachel, what are the benefits of play or, or unstructured play? Well, I think obviously play gives kids time to be creative, which I was talking about earlier, just to actually unpack their ideas. And in the workforce, one day, creativity is upheld as what, what people are looking for, innovation, creativity, new mm. ideas. So it gives kids a chance to do that. It also gives them a chance to de-stress and decompress and process their difficult emotions. Kids do that really well through play and it, research has shown that they form new neural connections and stronger ones when they can play and use that creativity rather than just be boxed into this really scheduled, structured time. OK, so take a little bit out of their schedule and let them have a little bit of unstructured mm, play. Yeah, Excellent. Really important. Thank you guys so much.
Always a pleasure having you here. Coffee Group is brought to you by Animum Pedia Pro 3, the only toddler milk with no added sugars. Now, if you have any worries that you would like addressed by our parenting panel, you can message the websites on screen um, on the Cafe Facebook page. One contributor will win this very cool ebook from Animum. Hey, Mel, I've got a bedtime story for you. I'm over here. Oh. Thank you, Holly. A nice update uh, that allows you to record your own voice reading the story. Congratulations to this week's winner, Vicky Aitken. Your ebook is on its way.